Okay, y'all, got makeup in my good bra on. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maggie, aka Kitchy Whips on Instagram, and this is floss tube number one. And yes, I am looking at myself because, you know, no one works critic and all that, but whatever. The baby is asleep. I felt like maximum effort. Let's get a floss tube going. I have no clue what I'm doing. Hmm. There's my cat, Phasma. She doesn't care. So let's just be cats together. Let's not care either and just have fun. Hmm? <laughs> oh, this is going great already. Okay, so this is my first floss tube. This is going to be a channel about cross stitch. I got back into cross stitch like a lot of people did during the pandemic 2020. Before then, I had stitched on and off since the 80s. The first time I ever stitched anything, I was in the fifth grade, about 11 years old, I think. My mom had always cross-stitched, but funny enough, I actually learned how to cross-stitch at a friend's house. She was cross-stitching this Precious Moments <laughs> uh, pattern, and I was so jealous, and I just wanted to stitch it, stitch it, and I begged and begged and begged my mom, please, please take me and buy me this pattern book, and I swear I'll do it. I, of course, never did, but I still have that book, and I actually still have the bobbin of, I think it was like 402 <laughs> that my friend's mom let me have when I started stitching. So I've been stitching on and off, but I never did a lot of like pleasure stitching. It was mostly for birth announcements or wedding announcements, gifts basically is what I stitched. I didn't do a lot of just stitching for myself until... The pandemic, I just happened to be pregnant when everything hit the fan. So cross stitch was kind of a hobby I could do while I was laying in bed being pregnant and not able to go anywhere. Kind of triggered when I thought, hmm, I should maybe stitch a birth announcement for this new baby. And then my 10 year old came to me and said, but mom, you never finished my birth announcement. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was when I got her birth announcement back out and finished it during lockdown and then started a new one for the baby. And after that, it just kind of snowballed. I went on Etsy and one thing led to another and I discovered all these designers and I discovered the stitch community on Instagram. I started to look up cross stitch stuff on YouTube, happened to find floss tube. And I mean, I, when I restarted stitching, I had no idea what linen was. <laughs> I didn't know what a needle minder was, project bags, like none of that. Back in the day when I was stitching, it was all Ada, which is awesome. I love Ada. All Ada, all stuff that I got from like Michaels or Joann's or AC Moore at the time when that one was still around. I, But none of that fancy stuff was on my radar at all all. I do recall back because when I went through my old stash, once I started, started stitching again, you know what words are hard, but I'll get there. I found some patterns that I had and they were from Butternut Road and Black Swan Designs. And I started both of those, which were very obviously pleasure stitches that I never finished. Um, but they, they were on my radar. I don't remember things like Mirabilia, which would have been around the time frame where I really was stitching, but I don't remember ever seeing them. I do remember quite clearly Teresa Winsler, specifically like this, her Cinderella Stroke of Midnight. Is that what it's called? I don't remember. But that's a specific one I can remember. My LNS at the time, which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, was Cross Stitch Cabin. And I remember seeing stuff like the Teresa Winslers. I remember all of the Told in a Garden, Butternut Road. What's the other one? Lavender and Lace. I remember all of those. And I remember looking at them and going, I would never spend $8 on one pattern. <laughs> I don't even want to. Well, you guys know. If you're in the community, if you are a stitcher, you already know. $8 is like a freaking steal for anything. Anything. <laughs> 
But at the time, I was like, that was crazy. Especially because you had to buy beads and Krynik and all this other stuff that I had never used. So, anyway, I've got some old whips and some old finishes. Very few finishes. And maybe I'll show those in a future video. For this video, I just kind of wanted to say hello and introduce myself. I don't think this is going to be a super long video. I just really wanted to get out there and be a part of the conversation, quite frankly. Because I think you guys are cool. And I'd like to hang out with you. Let's be friends. Let's chat. I'm cool. I'm sure you're cool, right? <laughs> Do you guys ever remember that children's show Yo Gabba Gabba? Okay, so I'm kind of like Yo Gabba Gabba. I'll wait for you to go search it on YouTube for a minute. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm a lot like Yo Gabba Gabba in that I'm bright and colorful and loud and fun and cute and slightly annoying. <laughs> I just like to have fun and I love talking about things that I'm passionate about and cross stitch is one of those things. I'm going to show you just a few of my current whips that are in a box that I keep here. This is my den and that's actually where I stitch right there. I don't have a chair. I don't have fancy anything. I just kind of stitch where I can sit. So I'm going to show you a few whips, but real quick, here's what you can expect from my channel. Just so you know up front. Hopefully I'm a good fit for your floss tube viewing, but if not, it's cool. Everybody likes what they like. I like a little bit of everything, but my focus, probably what I'm known for on Instagram is BAPS, what I call big ass projects. <laughs> big, big, big. Stuff like Mirabilia's, Bella Filipina's, Chatelaine's, those are my top three joys. Mirabilia, Nor Corbett, uh, Dren from Bella Filipina, Martina from Chatelaine. Her daughter Ella is now running Chatelaine Designs. Just love, love, love them. I could stitch all day on those. That won't be all that I talk about or show. There's a ton of other designers that I love. I have maybe 35 to 40 whips right now. Some, I, I don't know if I ever pick back up, but you know. I actually have a couple of finishes. That's the other thing. So if you like watching floss tubers that finish things, <laughs> I'm probably not a good channel for you to watch. I won't say, like, I don't feel like I start a lot of stuff. I just don't necessarily finish a lot of things. Part of that is the projects that I pick are bigger. Part of it is I'm not really into routine or schedules or... Anything that puts kind of a box around what I stitch when I stitch it, I've tried. I see the value of it. I know there's a lot of personality, personalities out there that like really lean into that and, and get so much done. And I love seeing that. I love seeing people excited about their progress or their stitch counts or percentages or whatever. My brain does not work that way. If I don't enjoy it, I don't really want to do it which is probably why I don't exercise <laughs> as much as I should. <laughs> so I really just want to stitch what I want to stitch when I want to stitch it. So yeah, let me just show you some things. So in conclusion, big projects, <laughs> not many finishes. Let's go. Let's just do this. <laughs> So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the most current thing on my Instagram. It is, of course, Precious Little June Bug from Nora Corbett. If you have been thinking about getting this one, just get it. Just get her. She's amazing. Her colors are amazing. She's super quick to stitch. Look at this little ball of fun. She's adorable and I love her and I'm almost finished. And didn't I just say I don't do many finishes? Well, there you go. I'm lying on my first video. <laughs> so this is her, excuse me while I figure out what my camera wants to do. Basically, I stayed up till one o'clock in the morning doing all of these beads, which, oh my, look. Look at her. You love her, right? 
Look at her cute little face. Look at the hair. Oh my goodness. So all I have left to do are the beads down here. This is 28 count linen from Grace Notes Fabrics. I will link them in the description box below if I can figure that out. We'll see what happens. The name of this fabric is, I don't know how to say it, Vavese, Vavese, Vavasa. <laughs> V-I-V-A-C-E, it's a musical term, I know that much. It is gorgeous. I could just bag yards and yards of this fabric. It's amazing, and she looks amazing on it. This was a fat quarter, come on baby, that I had. So I used half of it for her, and I'm gonna use the other half for Nora Corbett's Queen Anne's Lace. She's green and white and has these pinks that I think is gonna look just as pretty as this, and I can't wait. This Krynik, ugh. You guys, y'all, I love Krynik. I really do. I love anything that sparkles. But I needed 150V, what is that, vintage amber? And of course, like, nobody's got it. But I did have it in a number four. Nobody's got it in number four. I had a spool of it in number eight. And it was like trying to stitch with twine. <laughs> My hand was like a misshapen claw after that session. Oh my gosh. But it adds texture and sparkle and fun. I don't mind the claw. Here's another one that is almost finished. And y'all have been dragging my feet on this one. Bella Filipina Hummingbird Pixie. That's my ring light -like reflecting. When I saw her come out, she was an instant give it to me now. One thing you'll notice with my projects is I really like color. <laughs> I like to choose big, bold fabrics. And she's just, she just is color. She's amazing. So this is what I've got. So far, I just finished her face not too long ago. I've got her boots and legs are completely finished. I'm pretty sure I've finished all the beads on those. The skirt has the beads, but I need to backstitch with some Chronic 101. Her little sashy, shawly thing. I still need to bead as well as obviously her back. I've got to do her hair and her wings. And then she's got a buttload of stitches all over the place. I love her on this bright pink linen. This is another Grace Notes Fabrics 28 count linen, I think in Hope, which was a breast cancer awareness fundraiser that they did and I just love her on this I can't wait to do her wings but that's why she's not done because I'm putting off the wings there's like a bajillion colors in them <laughs> and it's going to be like a few stitches and then change colors and a few stitches and I'm just being lazy sorry but she's going to be cool when she's done and seriously like get with it Maggie you don't got that much to do What do you guys think? Do you guys do that? Do you get to the end of a project and then just go, all right, well, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm not going to stitch on this now. Like this close to finishing. And then you just go, all right, well, that's good. I'm cool. I don't know why I do that. I don't know. I get distracted. So that's the other thing about my channel is you will experience rabbit trails rabbit holes, squirrel sightings. I will go off on tangents. I will try to control that. I said try. 
Don't hold me to it. This is Earth Goddess from Joan Elliott. Uh, there we go. Love her. Love her so much. She's my first Joan Elliott ever. This is what I've got so far for her. This is an interesting one. She is on 28 count Monaco in a one-off color from Crazy Hamster, also known as Oksana on the Facebook stash unload group. I just love her colors. She's beautiful, but the reason why there's not more done is I have messed up. <laughs> I have made a mistake somewhere. I can't figure out where the mistake is. So I quit. I take my needle and I go home. <laughs> I quit playing. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll figure it out. I've got to figure out if I want to fix it or fudge it. Or quit it. I don't know. We'll see. But I really do like her. I want to do a conversion on her of a sort. Nothing major. We'll see. The last one that I want to share with you guys before I wrap this up is my gorgeous Chatelaine. If I can figure this out. This is, peekaboo, this is Rainy Day Seasons Autumn. It is, unfortunately, the only Rainy Days season that got designed before Martina passed away. There's a note on this one that says the other ones are coming, but unfortunately, this is the only one that we will have. And that's sad. This has been an absolute scream to stitch. Love it. Look at all that back stitching I did. Four different corners, y'all. <laughs> Look at those stems. Admire them. So a lot of you might know that Fiber Arts Amy, Fiber Arts Amy on Instagram and this here floss tube started Hashtag Chatelaine Wednesday. We would love for you to join in. Basically, we both have multiple Chatelaine kits, patterns. I've got a few starts, but we just were never working on them, which didn't make any sense because we would chat and be like, oh, they're so beautiful. It's so great. I just love them so much. And then we'd be like, oh, which ones have you done? And we're like, oh, I haven't done any of them either. <laughs> and we really just wanted not necessarily to be held accountable but we just wanted to kind of stitch with someone. Look at this unauthorized movement. How long has that been like that? And you guys didn't tell me. Y'all, sorry. I'm trying not to use gender specific terms. Everyone is welcome here, FYI. Y'all, y'all gotta tell me these things, like for real. So, anyway. Rabbit trail. Fiber Arts Amy and I were just chatting and we just wanted to be able to kind of cheer for each other and encourage each other. And then we were like, should we hashtag it? Why not? Maybe other people have chatelaines that they want to stitch on and they're intimidated by. So that's how we started hashtag chatelaine Wednesday. It's not just for stitched pieces. If you have kits, that's my daughter's phone. If you have kits, take a picture of it and excuse me one second. The big question is, can I figure out how to edit that out? I won't know where I left off, so we'll just pick up at if you have kits. <laughs> if you've never stitched a shadowing 
and you just have bookmarks off the Chatelaine website. I think it's chatelaine.de. Post those. Post your favorite patterns. Post your wish list. Post the kits you want from European Cross Stitch Shop. Uh, post anything. Questions, comments, stitches, whips, finishes, thoughts, feelings. Mm -hmm. Post it. Hashtag it. Chatelaine Wednesday. We want to see it. You are a part of it. If you have put in one stitch in a Chatelaine, you are a Chatelaine stitcher. If you've ever bought a pattern, a kit, if you have a wish list on the website, if all you've done is join the website and downloaded the free pattern that Ella offers, you are Chatelaine stitcher and we want to see your pictures under hashtag Chatelaine Wednesday. Everyone is welcome and we all want you to come along with us on this journey. Words are fun. I know what I'm doing. So I guess that's it for now. I wasn't really sure what to do in this first video, but I just kind of wanted to get out there and say hello. It's just about 20 minutes long. That's doable, right? I really wish I could wear my glasses, but the ring light makes it just about impossible unless I do this, which I'm not sure how fun that would be for you guys. Y'all, see, I did it again. Habits are hard. Is that it? Please feel free to follow me on Instagram at Kitchy Whips. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. There may be a second video. I may edit this one beautifully. I may put it up like it is. I may rewatch this and just curl up in the fetal position in a corner of my room and sob. I don't know. But I'm going to be stitching <laughs> at some point no matter which I decide. <laughs> so feel free to subscribe, like, comment. Please say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Like I said, Instagram Kitchy Whips, I post there quite a bit. You guys are awesome. Thanks for letting me be a part of the community, part of the community on IG, the part of the floss tube community. More easy words. And I guess I'll see y'all the next time. Hopefully with either a stash dive. You guys want to see some patterns? I've got some mirabilias. Some Bella Filipinas. Quite a few. Chatelaine kits. You guys want to see some stuff? i got stuff. I'll also do a whip parade. That will probably be pretty easy to do. I don't know the frequency with which I shall post here. Probably every two weeks, maybe once a month. It kind of depends because my baby refuses to take naps now. That's not fun or enjoyable. There is a certain like short feature I would like to do every week on Fridays. Something I used to do on my old blog back in my scrapbooking days. But I don't know that that will happen, but maybe kind of on the table. If there's any of my projects that you've seen on Instagram that you would like me to talk about or show off, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Tell me what to do. <laughs> anyway, I will see y'all later. So get your needles out. Put in some stitches. Bye.